Hey everyone, Chemistry here. I'm going to be showing you how to properly use the step sequencer and how to add samples to your browser. When I say properly use the step sequencer, I'm just saying um, I want you to know how to stay on beat with the tempo using percussion instruments, of course. So a lot of times you'll make a beat on the step sequencer by using these steps here, these little steps, you light them up. Um, if Sometimes you make a little beat and then you play it alone on the pattern and it sounds fine, like it actually sounds really good. But then, once you add it to the song, for some reason it sounds completely off, everything's just a huge mess. Um, I know I used to do that a lot and it's actually because you're completely off beat. Your tempo, you're not following the tempo, you're just following your own little imaginary tempo within the pattern. So I'm going to show you how to follow the tempo stay on beat and <clears throat> how that's going to affect your song. So I guess I'll start off with how to add samples to your browser and then how to drag them into the step sequencer and all that. So I'm using the Vengeance Essential Club Sounds 3. You get that. Don't know what website exactly but you can buy it online or pirate it. If you do buy it that's fine. I definitely respect you for that. But it does cost us quite a bit of money, so I totally understand if you pirate it. And I hope nothing or no one will have anything against you. Um, so yeah, once you get that um, downloaded, it will come up as a zip file. It's kind of like those the purple icon of the books. You're going to have to download something like WinRAR, and that will unzip the files, and then add it into a folder, depending on where you um, extracted it. So, I just extract it to my, oh, whoops, yeah, box mod. Um, I just extract it to my uh, desktop when I'm lazy, and it will come up as a folder, kind of like this one right here. And then if you open that up, it should come up with all the um, subfolders, with the bass drums, break beats, clap cymbals, and all that stuff. Um, once you have that all extracted and whatnot, what you do is you either press F11 or go into options and file settings. And then if you haven't done this before, it'll look like a, it'll come up with a screen like this. Click the folder icon and then it will bring up this, well, this list, right? And because I put it on my desktop, Event Essential Club Sounds is actually right here, right? But depending on where you extracted the folders, just go to that location, click on the pack folder, and then press OK. Don't click on bass drum or claps or anything like that. You want to click on the entire pack folder because if you click on the subfolder, you'll only get the bass drum and not the claps and cymbals that you actually want. So then once you got that clicked, press OK, then it'll show up right here. It'll say users, owner, desktop, and then the location root. You don't have to add a browser name, you can just press X right now and it'll pop up on your browser. But if you do want to add a name, um, I usually put a dash first and then like VEC1, I think this is the one. Um, the reason why I add a dash is because um, it'll come up on the very top because you know like symbol comes before letters. So yeah, here it is. I know I have already have it, but here's my second one and it came up on the very, very top. I'm just going to go take that out now. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, after that, once you click on it, it'll show up as all these subfolders that you just saw earlier. And then if you click on that, it will come up with the, all these uh, samples. So here are the samples. If you click on them, you got all these kicks. Pick a kick that you like, click on it, and drag it onto the step sequencer. You can also drag it onto the playlist. That'll work. It'll show up as this wave sample here, and it'll also give you a audio clip uh, channel right here. But I'm going to delete that since I want to use it constantly, and it's just much more uh, efficient to just use it um, on the step sequencer. So I already have my kicks, my claps, and my hi hats. My kick is in VC3, bass drum, clubby, 033. Then I have a closed hi hat. 
open and a clap. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a 4x4 four four beat. Um, it's not going to be creative at all. It will be more for the techno style people that want to just stay on beat. So to be on beat um, to the tempo is start off with the kick, right click on the channel, go all the way down to fill each four steps. So that will fill each four steps, right? Now that is the tempo. You are following the tempo now. You basically can't go wrong at this point. <laughs> um, so if that will be our kind of like our plate, you know, our base. And then after that we have a closed hi-hat. It just gives you the ticking noise. Um, you want to turn that nice and low. Um, it shouldn't be the main focus of the beat at all. And you want to get a little bit creative with this because some people just like to fill in each step like that. Um, some like to fill in every each, like two steps like this or make kind of triplets. And you can also do a lot of offbeat stuff too. Um, this is completely off. But I'm just going to keep it um, just running all the way through. After that we have the open hi-hat, also known as the offbeat hat. Because this is going to be playing on the offbeat. So you're playing directly in between two kicks. So you got the kick, uh, fill, uh, an empty empty step, then the hi-hat comes in, then another empty step. So it's completely in between these two kicks. You also want to turn down this hi-hat about below half, um, depending on what genre you're making. And you want to just do that again and again. Um, after that we have the clap. That clap um, goes on every 4th and 12th step, I think. It's basically like kick, clap, kick, clap. Um, you also want to turn down the clap. Well, it does depend, but the clap has to be below the kick. You know, It can't be going over the kick. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, beginner producers, just, I don't know, it's like kick and then you hear this clap and it, you can't hear the kick anymore, but that's not supposed to happen. The clap is actually supposed to be quite soft. But that does depend on the genre, of course. So that is your 4x4 beat. Very, very simple. Next, we could use or try to make a hip hop beat. Maybe not hip hop, maybe like a pop, just modern stuff. Um, for that, I'm going to use a softer kick, just the breakbeat kick. Let's pick some I like. <laughs> that works. I'm actually going to make another uh, add filter group here. I'm just going to call it hip hop. And then I'll make a little section on the um, step sequencer. So, yeah, you just have to right click on that and add filter group. So now if you click on it, it will have all audio clips, unsorted, and hip-hop. So unsorted will show you this, our old samples, and then hip-hop will show us um, our hip-hop samples, or channels. So here's a kick. I'm going to have lots more hi-hats. So I'm kind of having like a, kind of like a, I, I don't really know how to explain this, but it's not so much of a tick noise. This is. So you kind of want to like have a tick noise and kind of like a, a short swish noise. Something like that. Slightly different. I don't know how to better explain that. Um, then for the open hi-hat, you want to kind of aim for something that kind of sounds a little bit higher. Kind of like that. Not really, but I'll use it anyway kind of sounds like uh, people, I always kind of imagine 
gnomes or something working on engineering and they're like using these machines and they're making these high noises you, like kind of like that that's what you want to have <laughs> um, kind of a World of Warcraft reference but I don't know why I get that picture in my head whenever I hear those kind of open hi-hats but anyway you want to have something like that and your clap has to be a little softer not like a club clap maybe a little bit of a group clap like that one and yeah so you have a few more or actually just one more hi-hat you can also have two claps hitting at the same time balancing each other out that does work and you can also have a sub kick but we're just going to keep it simple so for the kick instead of having it hit every four beats what we're going to do is we're going to slow it all the way down to 185 or no 180 right up on the tempo so that's almost half the speed we're just doing it's pretty slow and not very well just very simple and boring so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this kick and I move it down so it'll be it'll be tripping the kick will be kind of tripping and that will leave room for the clap which is right here and right here so if I turn down the clap a little bit so the clap stays the same you can also add a clap here clap, clap here maybe another one there but I'm just not <laughs> I'm just gonna make the basic beat but that would be good for um, kind of a transition um, then for these kind of whoosh noises I can go put that really low and make that kind of off so this is hitting the offbeat right here and then here is not hitting the offbeat but it's like the step right before the offbeat but it's still off and but it sounds like it's tripping as well which is good this is the tick noise or the close hi-hat here is going to be the constant so I'm probably just going to fill out each step, at each two steps. So it's just constantly hitting every second step. And then for the open, I'm going to turn that much lower and then just hit every offbeat like I was doing. So it's not that much different when you think about it, and I'm trying not to make it that much different so it's not completely um, unfollowable, if that's a word. Um, I want you to be able to do this yourself, so this would be more of a break beat or a hip hop beat. Um, and yeah, so it does get a little more creative. I'm probably running out a lot of time here. Oh no, only 13 minutes. Okay, that's decent. Um, so yeah, I hope you understand at least that. I could show you more about the step sequencer now. Um, end it here if you think you already know enough. Um, right here, see this thing? If you click and drag, it adds numbers. Four will keep it the same. Eight will double it. And then 16 will double it even more. So you have much, much, much bigger pattern. Which is actually good. Um, when I make break beats, I like to have. Uh, Double it, double it up and have eight bars instead of just four so if I just try to copy everything I did here again um, fill out two steps off beats and a clap I could around here I could change it up right to make kind of a transition so I'll do that clap thing that I was showing you earlier maybe even change the hi-hats um, even the kick so yeah it kinda adds a transition and keeps it um, creative and original so now that you know that next there this little light here basically all it does is it concentrates on 
keeping it looping. So let's say I have this, um, I don't know, this pattern on the piano roll that's playing for a long time, much over where the beat is going to stretch. It keeps looping, but if I took that off, and I'm going to do this. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to do this on the what is it? The four by four beat. I'm going to try doing it there, just because um, I won't be able to because I used a different audio section. Sorry. Um, okay. Try having just a very long clap. So. Let's say I have this huge pattern, um, this instrument pattern, and this light right here isn't on. It stops. The beat just disappeared, but look here, the piano roll is still still playing. It's finishing for the it's finishing the piano roll before the beat comes back. If you don't want that to happen, click on this light, and the pattern will keep on looping. Right here is just the play button. That's all that is. Right here is just to add a pattern name, that little plus sign. Or add a pattern, yeah. This is pattern one. You can right click on it and it'll show up on the browser. Swing, that is kind of like it modifies the position of which your notes are. So if you kind of add it like that, I think. It's actually adding a lot of swing. Kind of like the one thirds positioning that I kind of show you in one of my advanced melody tutorials. I don't recommend you use the swing at all because it's much more professional and gives you so much more freedom if you use actual note positioning. So definitely use that. This is modification of velocity. So this is a lot like these ostrich faces right here, the ostriches. If you have this high hat here and you select the high hat by clicking this green light and then you open up this velocity it's actually showing you for every single step it's giving you this volume option so if I kinda wanna um, add a little more style to my hi-hat that's just basically hitting at the same level or same volume and I want to change that I can make it sound like this So I'm just lowering the volumes of the three after the on beat. I hope that covers it. If you have any questions, let me know. Personal message me on here on YouTube. And stay tuned for the next tutorial tomorrow.